Hi everyone, my name is Will Valida. I'm a software engineer and Microsoft Data Platform MVP. And in this video, we're going to be creating databases and containers in Azure Cosmos DB using Terraform. An Azure Cosmos DB instance is made up of a hierarchy of resources. At the top, we have our account. This, is, this has a unique name, and here we manage things like account consistency, firewall rules, and data replication. Underneath our account, we will provision our databases, and we can have one or multiple databases within our account. Within our databases, we can use them to manage our containers. Containers are the unit of scalability for both provision throughput and storage. They are horizontally positioned and can be replicated across multiple regions. Within our containers, we can insert items into our container, which will be the data that we store in Azure Cosmos DB. As well as using Terraform to provision our databases and containers, we will also introduce the concept of variables in Terraform in this video. Input variables serve as parameters for a Terraform resource or module, allowing us to customize our Terraform resources and sharing them between different configurations. When we create variables, we can set the value of those variables using either the CLI or as environment variables. When we create resources and modules, we can use the output variables as return values and then assign these variables to different resources and modules within our configuration. So in this video, we'll carry on from our last video and implement variables into our existing configuration file. We will then create our database and container for our Azure Cosmos DB account using Terraform before deploying those resources to Azure. So here I am back in Visual Studio and let's start by creating our variable file. Now in order to do this, I'm just gonna create a file called variables.tf and this file will hold all of our variables and we can create a variable block like so. So if I just de declare my variable block and I'll give this name of rg name and that'll be the name of our variable. Now when we create a variable, we can provide a type. So I'm gonna give this variable a type of string and we can also provide a default value. So I'm just going to give it the default name, a default value of the resource group name that I defined earlier. Just go back to my variables file. Cool, and we can also give our variables a description, which would provide some information as to what the purpose of this variable is, if other people are using our Terraform resources and modules. And um, we could also provide some validation or declare our variables as sensitive if we wish to do so. But we have this variable declared. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use it in my Terraform file by going var.rgname. And now instead of hard coding the name of my resource group, I'm now using the default value of this variable that I've defined in my variables file. So let's go ahead and add some more variables to remove these hard coded values for my location and also the name of my Cosmos DB account. Cool, so now that we've updated our file to use variables instead of hard-coded values, let's create our database. And for this, I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna step into the Terraform documentation for SQL database. Remember the account that I'm working with is using the SQL API. So I'll need to create a database for the SQL API. And here's a bit of an example of how we can actually create um, our database using Terraform. But if we have a look at the following, we have a look at the argument reference, we see that we need to provide it some required arguments. So we need to give it a name, which will specify the name of our database. 
we need to provide the resource group name, which will be the name of our resource group in which our Cosmos DB account has been provisioned. And we also need to give it the name of our account, so the name of our Cosmos DB account. We can also provide um, a throughput value if we're provisioning our uh, if we're provisioning our throughput at the database level. For those of you who know a little bit more about Cosmos DB, uh, you, we can provision throughput at either the database or container level. Uh, but for this tutorial, I'm going to provision it at the um, container level. So we'll just provide the name, the resource group, and the account name. So if I go back into my main Terraform file, I can do this by creating another resource block. Azure RM, now I'm looking for database. I'm going to give it just this resource block, um, a name of DB. And let's go ahead and provide some parameters. So first I'm going to create a new variable for the, my name of, the, of my database. And now if I go back into my main Terraform file, I can give this name the variable name that I've defined. Use the resource group name of the resource group that I defined earlier. And then my account name for my Cosmos DB account name. So here I'm using the output value uh, variables of name for both my resource group to, for, to define the resource group name in which I'm going to provision this database to, and also the name of my Cosmos DB account to the account that I'm going to provision this database to. So now that I've created my database, I need to create my container. So if we go back into our Terraform documentation, here's an example of what we need to create. And we're here, we need to provide the following arguments. So again, we need to give our container a name. We also need to provide the name of the resource group in which we're going to provision the container to. We also need to provide the account name of our Cosmos DB account. And we also need to provide our database name, which we're going to provision our container to. So remember, if we go back to our hierarchy of Cosmos DB, at the top, you've got your account. Below that, you've got your databases, and now we're going to be creating our container, which is underneath our database. We also need to provide a partition key path. And for this uh, tutorial, I'm also going to provide a throughput since we're provisioning our throughput at the container level. So let's go ahead and do this. So again, I need to create a new resource block for my container. And I need to give it a name, so I'll create a variable for that. providing the name of my resource group, the account name, so the name of my Cosmos DB account, and then the database name, the name of the database that I defined earlier. For partition key path, I'm just gonna hard code this value to ID. So it'll be the documents ID will, will partition on. And then for throughput, I'll just give it a hard coded value of 400. Cool, so that should be everything that we need to provision our database and our container. So I'm going to open up a new terminal. And I'm just going to validate my Terraform code by running Terraform validate. First, I need to initialize it. My backend has been initialized, and so now I can validate. Make sure everything's correct. Looks good. So now I can generate my execution plan by running Terraform plan.
Cool, and now that my plan's been generated, I can see that two resources are gonna be added. So here we can see that my container will be created with the name that we provided. Well, this would be the account name, the name of our database, the name of our container, the petition key path, the resource group name, and also the throughput. And then also the uh, database, so the name of the database and the resource group. Now looking at the plan, I've noticed there's something wrong with my resource group name. It's actually given me the name of my Cosmos DB account, which is what I don't want. So I'm just going to copy and paste the resource group name there. Provide that as my resource group name instead of the name of my account for my container. Just save that run my Terraform plan again. That's a good reason why you should run Terraform plan and just verify it to make sure it's not going to create something you don't expect. Cool, so now it's generated a new plan. So if I just verify my container again, I can see that the resource group name is now correct. So now that everything's looking good, let's apply. And through the power of video editing, we can see that our database and container has been created. So if I hop into my Cosmos DB account, go into my data explorer, I should see my SQL, well, my database created here, along with my container, petitioned by my ID, and for the throughput, we're manually setting the throughput to 400 request units. So that's the end of our demo. Let's recap. So in this video, we learned about the components of our Cosmos DB account and their hierarchy. We also learned about variables in Terraform and how we can use them to make our Terraform code more reusable across different configurations. And then we learned how we can use Terraform to create databases and containers for our Azure Cosmos DB account. So that's the end of this video. I hope you found it useful. Uh, check out the description below for the, for the demo code that I've got hosted on my GitHub, as well as the Terraform docs that we used in the demo. If you have any questions, comment down below or feel free to reach out to me on Twitter. I've got my Twitter handle up there. Uh, if you like this video, give it a like and I'll see you all next time.